You have to go to my channel, honey, please. No, and I hey, everybody, how are you? Jeff Gelman of Solid Nine Training. Welcome to the Q&A. How's everybody doing? All right, we got Linda over here. She's trying to log into our computer, but she's going to find my channel really, really quick. There you go. Click on that, and you'll find it. There you go. Here awesome. Because you're going to open it up. There you go. Awesome. Okay, so here we'll be able to answer, <coughs> ask all your dog training questions. Okay, hit that. So welcome. So the reason why we do these shows, I do them every, I don't know, once a week. I don't do them every on a certain day. They used to be on Mondays and they were on Wednesdays and they move around. But the reason why we're doing these is because so many people have so many questions. I want to be able to offer as much help as I possibly can. So, hey, Colleen, how are you doing? And just remember, you have to talk loud because we've got a new microphone. And remember, go green. All right. Now is a good time to ask your dog training questions. You're going to get answers. If you're brand new to my world, if you're brand new to my show, what you're going to do is you're going to hear me talk a lot about punishment. The reason why I talk so much about punishment is because that is the only way to stop unwanted behaviors. A lot of people are going to tell you that, you know, no, it's not. And remember, punishment is not abuse. So most of the questions that people ask are, how do I stop my dog from fill in the blank? So number one, you have to understand punishment. You have to understand how to punish a dog properly. Obviously, and we don't talk science here, but we obviously use positive reinforcement to train what we want, which would include all your basic commands and any new task that the dog would want to do. But in order to prove something, you have to use punishment. In order to stop something, you have to use punishment. So it freaks out a lot of people, and a lot of people think that's all we do. 90% of our training day at our training center is all reward. We use clickers, we use food, we use praise, we use toys, we use all reward-based training. We use physical touch, affection. But to stop something and to prove something, you can't. You've got to use punishment. A lot of dog trainers, nobody ever wants to talk about it at all. Whether they don't want to talk about it because they're afraid of getting all the hate, which I get, or they don't know, or they're lying to you. But we're, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to be honest with you. It's really, really important. Here we go. Linda, jump right into the questions. Okay. This is from Caitlin. My nine-week-old puppy is growling at other dogs. Should I correct or allow her to assert herself with pushy dogs? If you want to have a really growly dog. Now, a pushy dog, this is another thing. You should be keeping your dog away from pushy dogs. So a nine-week-old dog should have a very small group of dogs that it meets. Very small. Number one, it's not fully vaccinated yet. So it should be meeting no strange dogs. It should only be meeting your small, small pack. If you go to a socialization area, maybe one of the big box stores, and all those dogs are vaccinated, that's a different thing. But it should be meeting zero dogs on the street. At nine weeks old, it should be meeting no dogs on the street whatsoever. Next. Um, from Angelica. Hey, it's me again. No matter how much I'm trying to create train, he will never go in willingly. What can I do? You can do a Skype. That's what you can do. This is another thing. I don't do this stuff to drum up business, but obviously consider that I do make a living training dogs. I offer a Skype program. I offer a Patreon page. Go to patreon.com slash solid canine training. You can get more help than a 15 to 20 second um, sound bite. So what you do is to get your dog to go in the crate, leash pressure, okay, kennel in and kennel out, kennel in, kennel out. And you could also then, if you want to use food, use food. But the downfall of using food is the dog stops doing it unless they get food. That's where the leash pressure has has you know has to be. But every dog that we've ever touched, over 4,000 dogs, has been able to kennel up on command, even the most difficult ones. So consistency and leash pressure. Next. Um, Angelica also said, I wish you would come to Boston. Okay. Angelica, let me call you on your shit right now, respectfully. I'm in Providence, Rhode Island. It's going to cost you $2,500 for me to come to Boston. I'm in Providence. I'm 42 miles away from you. Come to Providence. I'd love to have you there. I have a seminar coming up, www.rvdogtrainer.com. I'm literally a short drive from you. For me to come to you, it would be so much money. Come to me. It'll be a lot less money. Seriously, go to rvdogtrainer.com. Come to my next seminar. Next. 
<clears throat> uh, this is from Henrik. Our puppy jumps up a lot. How do we train her not to? You punish behavior. Remember, Henrik, thanks for being on the show. Anytime you want to stop an unwanted behavior, there has to be punishment. So what you, do, what you don't do is this. Don't ignore the behavior. You don't tell the dog to sit. You don't turn your back. And you don't wait till the dog does what you want and reward it. Or else you're going to train a jumping dog. All those things that you hear about that are nice, gentle, friendly, they don't work. So what do you do? The dog, I've got a video on this on my YouTube channel, how to stop jumping. It's my number two um, most popular video. So what you can do is you can use a bonker if you want to. A bonker is a wrapped up towel. A bonker is a fantastic tool. What you do is dog jumps up. You would say no, throw the bonker at the dog. The dog stops jumping. You can have a leash on the dog and somebody want you, somebody holds the leash. The dog comes up to you. They would say no. You give a leash correction. You can use a pet convincer. A pet convincer is compressed air. It's this. It's, com <laughs> it's compressed air. You would say no and you would go, <clears throat> there's no air in here because it freaks out dogs. And I've got dogs right next to me. So you would do that. You can use a remote collar, any of those things. But then, uh, then you absolutely can train the sit afterwards afterwards, but don't tell the dog to sit to stop unwanted jumping. This is what happens. Dog jumps, you say sit, you say good, you reward. You just train the dog to jump sit. That's how dogs learn. You just said jump sit, jump sit, jump sit. So that's how you do it. That's how you stop an unwanted behavior. It takes three seconds. It's actually easier to train a dog not to jump than it is to train sit. Next. Awesome. Steve wants to know, what would be the first step to starting to use a clicker for training? We haven't used it yet. So a clicker is not a magical tool. Just remember that. I can click all day long and a dog won't do shit for me. I can use a remote collar all day long. The dog won't do shit for me, except for stop some unwanted behaviors that are serious. But clickers, food, and remote collars don't train dogs. Dog training trains dogs. So what's the first thing you do? Well, you can watch our video underneath our FAQ section on how to get the dog to understand what a clicker means. So some people call it loading a clicker. So you have to teach the dog what the clicker means. Then we don't have a lot of clicker videos. Get your average. There's thousands of good dog training videos on there. How to clicker train a dog to do basic obedience. Sit, down, place, um, recall. Tons of them. So you can start watching those things. But I just want you to remember a clicker is a not it's not a remote control that makes the dog do something training does. All a clicker does is marks a behavior. It's just a marker tool, which and it's a fantastic tool. <clears throat> Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Next. Lori says, hi, Jeff and Linda. Wondering how many hours do you sleep? You do so much. So incredible. Linda, you look so cute as usual. Why, thank you. She looks hot. And madly in love with both of you. Awesome. We I love you too. I sleep enough. Next question. I'm he, trying to get a lot done. He does not sleep enough. Next I'm, question. <laughs> ironically, I'm going to pick up my sleep study tomorrow morning. I'll let everybody know, know the results. But I sleep enough. I'm trying to change the world. And I get enough rest to do it. Don't worry. Next. Okay. Holly wants to know, any spots left for your T3? Yes, they are. The Providence T3, yes, they are. Holly, I'd love to see you there. People can go to train the trainers with Sean and Jeff. This is probably our, ooh, geez, I don't know, 28th one or something. So, yeah, wow. I'd, love, I'd love to have you there. Next. That's a lot of t 3 I know. Um, Spencer asks, at what age should I stop using the, he's just a puppy excuse Six month old Labradoodle pulling on leash reactivity with other dogs. Spencer, yesterday. All right. Come on now. You're raising a dog. Six months old, you know, there's going to be certain things the dog can cannot learn as far as like duration, but as far as the dog's capability of learning stuff, you can get a six month old dog should not be pulling on the leash. At four months old, the dog should be able to walk politely on a leash. Don't worry. You didn't mess up the dog. You didn't destroy the relationship. You didn't like lose any ground tomorrow. Train the dog to stop pulling on the leash and stop treating it like a puppy. Next. Uh, here's Crystal's question. How do you determine which dogs would do good with scent work? Can you post more videos on scent training? Crystal? No, I won't because that's not our level of expertise. So we use, we only use, that's not what we do. We're family pet dog trainers. We do some scent work for dogs just as sort of like a 
a little activity, no different than like a dog climbing up a, a, an A-frame and down. All dogs can pretty much do it. So, but if you want to do a, a nose work, a true nose work dog has to have incredible drive, incredible drive. They look for they look for prey drive and they look for hunt drive, which we don't do. So we don't test dogs for that. We just do it literally for pure fun. So that's not our level of expertise at all. Next. Ali T. I've been using a prong collar for training, including in the house, working great. Should I be taking it off when he is in the kennel? Yes, all prong collars, technically all equipment should go off the dog in the kennel. When not supervised, if you've got a dog that barks when you're not there, you're going to have to have the bark collar on. A lot of times, all your separation anxiety dogs, we have to have remote collars on them. Yes, remote collar on, a shock collar on the dog that struggles with anxiety. That's the magic answer if we want to use the word magic. We've done it thousands of times. It doesn't make it worse. Next. But yes, the prong collar, yes, because it can get caught in the um, edges. Next. William says, love these guys. William, I love you too. We love you. Next. Uh, Chevy. Hi guys. Nice to see you on YouTube. Dog reactive, I guess, working line. W working line, German G Shepherd. Yep. Germ German Shepherd. I correct on prong and she redirects wearing muzzle. I have heard you say that redirection is choice. Will she redirect on the e-collar as well? So what I mean, so yes, a redirection is choice. And the way we know that redirection is a choice <laughs> is because we have got families that the dog redirects on one family member but not another family member. We have a dog that will redirect on the owner, but not one of our trainers. Therefore, the dog is making the choice to do it. It's a very important point. The reason why I say that is because you have to let the dog know that that is a bad choice. So if your corrections are too late sometimes, the dog is still ramped up and it takes all that energy instead of going forward or say to the left, if you heal your dog on your left, towards the environmental that it was lunging, growling um, at, it takes that energy and it then shifts it now to your leg or up the leash or at your midsection or at one of your extremities. It's very, pop very, very, um, uh, what's the word I'm talking about? Popular for dogs to redirect. So, but that's where the, that's where people are like, oh, geez, that's where prong collars make dogs aggressive. No, they don't. Shock collars make dogs aggressive. No, they don't. Every dog that's ever come into us aggressive has never had a tool on before. So there goes that theory. We can always say that harnesses make dogs aggressive because we get a lot of aggressive dogs that come in on harnesses. But we don't say that because it's a ridiculous statement. The reason why dogs are aggressive is because no one told the dog ever to be not aggressive. So try a remote collar. Get your timing down. I'm glad you're muzzling up the dog. If the dog does redirect on you, which it might, you're going to have to work the dog through that. Next. Uh, Holly says, Smith's rule. Yeah, Linda. Yeah. Thank happy, you. It's, happy, more, it's Morrissey's birthday today. Ha happy birthday, Morrissey. Uh, Kai Frohn. I own an 18-week-old GSD, and he tends to pull on the leash a ton. I'm not sure when a good time would be to put a prong collar on. So, Kai Frohn, at 18 weeks old, you got a dog that's four and a half months old. You absolutely can have a prong collar on the dog. What I'd also like you to do is make sure that you're on, you're doing a daily food training protocol. I'd like you to use the dog's daily kibble. So, if the dog is eating a cup and a half or two cups, whatever the dog is eating a day, take that kibble, put it in a little treat pouch, and that's the dog's food through daily repetitions of obedience commands. All your sits, all your downs, all your place, all tons of recall. Take one piece of kibble at a time and practice recall. The dog's going to freaking love it. Dogs, puppies love food. Practice that. For heel, it's a little bit hard. Remember, we're pet dog trainers. We don't do competition heel. So we're not going to use a food lure or a food reward usually during the healing. We'll just use a prong collar for that. Next. Uh, trusted canine training. Foster dog poops and pees in crate due to past owner crating for days. She's afraid to go in the bathroom in front of you on leash out of fear from being scolded. I've been tying her out and spying. Any tips? So what I would do is I would keep keep up with that. First of all, we don't know. So I'm going to, we don't know, ex unless you know factually the story, unless you factually know that that owner left the dog in the crate too long, and if they peed, they were scolded. Unless you know that, which it's possible. A lot. Of, the reason why I say that is because a lot of people out there that have got dogs that they've gotten other than at eight weeks old, we've got these stories that, that, that unfortunately were made up. I'm not saying you made up the story. Please don't get me wrong. But this is what I want you to do. No more story. 
So you don't duplicate the story. I know you said it to me because I have to help you troubleshoot, but I don't want you to ever repeat that story ever again to anybody else, ever. Keep it to yourself, tell a new story. What I want you to do is this. Monitor its food, monitor its water. Make, so, make yourself an Excel spreadsheet so you can start tracking when the dog goes to the bathroom. I want you to take it out to a, this one potty spot. Believe it or not, I want you to pee or poo, that no, you don't poo, pee in that potty spot. If there is poop, if the dog has an accident in the crate, take that poop, put it outside where you want the dog to go to the bathroom. I do want you to stand there. Um, I have no problem with you doing a little bit of a tie out as long as it's not on a prong collar. Never tie out a dog on a prong collar, please. You can use a martingale if you want to and never do it on an area where the dog can fall off of something because then it can choke. Um, and if that's what works, works. Also, go for structured walks and stop every 20 minutes or every 30 minutes for 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 specific potty breaks. Make sure also your kennel is nice and small that the dog doesn't is not able to go to the bathroom. Also, you know how you make it small width-wise? You actually can make it small height-wise. It's not going to be forever. But if a dog has to sort of scrunch down and crawl into a crate, it's harder for them to poop and harder for them to pee. Also, what you can do is to stimulate the anal glands from the sphincter from popping out some poop. You can take a Q-tip or a soft match, not the, not, the, not the sulfur end. You put it in the dog's butt. This is actually what a lot of people do. Talk to any show dog person. And he, that's what they do. And it stimulates um, the poop reflex. Next. Hmm, interesting. Yep. Vonda says, how to correct my Yorkie resourcing house and myself and certain toys? Um, punishment. So you've got a Yorkie. It's a tiny dog. Get yourself a bonker. Anytime that dog is 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 resource guarding, say a toy, say no, throw the bonker, all right? Throw the bonker. And you're going to hear that that I'm fully aware of the conversations out there, guys. First of all, thank you, YouTube, for all you folks showing up on YouTube Live. Madly in love with you. If you don't know who I am, my name is Jeff Gelman of Solid Canine Training. I travel the world doing dog training seminars. I've got, a, I've got a dog training facility in Providence, Rhode Island. We're hiring trainers, by the way. And we specialize in aggression rehab and behavior modification. Anytime we're trying to teach some a dog something to do, it's all reward-based training. And anytime we're trying to stop it, you have to use a punishment. Punishment is not abuse. Every single dog owner needs to understand how to properly punish a dog. They got to understand how to do that. You're never mad. You're never angry. You're never upset at the dog at all. So what you're going to do is dog resource guard something. You say no calmly. Wait one second. Throw a bonker. It's a towel. You won't hit hurt your Yorkie or any other breed of dog. Next. Uh, Kyfrone. Also, I hear a ton of people say that they will take their dog to go potty and the dog won't go. But as soon as it comes in, what would I tell them to do? I mean, if you're looking for advice for you as a dog trainer, you should think about joining my Patreon page, patreon.com, solid canine training. I just say that because you probably have a lot of questions. Give them the same advice that I just gave you. All right. Give them the same advice that I just gave you. Next. Uh, Randy is ask, uh, saying, awesome session, guys. Awesome. Thanks, Randy. Uh, Na Nasham. I yep. don't know how to pronounce that. Nahum, yep. What do you recommend using for food training for dogs who eat raw? So what you can do with that is you can use dried liver if you want. They do. You can you can always dry some raw food up. They have dried chicken, dried beef, dried lamb. They've got you know little dried pieces of tiny. Make your create your own kibble. Next. Uh, Jay Hamlin is asking, "Hi guys, Jeff. In the go home sessions, are you getting the clients to prompt all commands on e collar? Only correcting for non compliance after verbal cue? We do both. At the the dogs by the time the dogs go home, they should be on correction only. But we do teach the owner how to make sure that they understand how the training was in case they have to troubleshoot. Next." Um, Chevy says, thank you so much. You guys are awesome and do so much good in the world. You've inspired me to a side hustle of dog training. Uh, New Zealand needs more balanced trainers. New Zealand needs every, every <coughs> bless you. Excuse me. I mean, everybody needs more balanced trainers around the world. So proud of you. Kudos. Awesome. If I can help any way, let me know. I, you know, that's why, that's why I do so much with my, my Patreon page next. Um, Amy wants to know what's your go-to method of self-defense against off-leash dogs charging you or your dog on leash? Um, my feet, I kick them. So this is the thing. It's a huge issue. What's going on right now. It's a humongous issue. A lot of people hear that. Oh, you, I would never kick a dog. Okay. It's not about kicking a dog. It's about protecting your dog and protecting you. And if you're with another human being, or especially if you're protecting your children, I'd like to think that if, I was your dog or I was one of your kids and an off-leash dog came charging that you would protect me. 
And it's becoming more and more of an issue with off-leash dogs killing and attacking people's dogs as they're walking down the streets. And dogs are dying and dogs are being injured. If a dog is going to be injured, it's not going to be my dog. I will absolutely protect my dog. I will absolutely protect myself. I will protect Linda and I will protect my children. And I will have no problem at all neutralizing a threat. And I know this sounds like, oh my God, what are you, a tough guy? I'm the least, and I know I'm coming across as loud and obnoxious on these shows because it is a radio show. I mean, it is a YouTube show. You don't want me to sit here going, when the dog approaches you, what I want you to do is I want you to say, yo, dog, leave. You know, like, come on now. You, 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 you would turn me off. In fact, five people just jumped off the freaking show. So what I want you to do is you take your dog, put your dog behind you, you stand out, and your foot goes out hard. If you've got a hiking stick, use it. Bear spray, use it. And, and a lot of people are like, oh, my God, that sounds hardcore, until they hear about one of their friend's dogs getting attacked on a walk. Unless you have seen a dog killed in front of you, or a, your, a dog mauled in front of you, or a human bitten in front of you. Here's a great example. Here's a great example. Who saw that, that video of that bulldog attacking that kennel worker? Now, it's been going on all over, uh, all over the internet. Now, obviously, that was an easy thing to stop. We all know she should have stood up, blah, blah, blah. I know. But imagine, though, if all she had to do was kick or pick up and throw that dog anything. Now imagine a dog that is like triple the size with a bigger mouth, stronger jaws that like was seriously intending on harming somebody. We see that all the time. Next. Uh, trusted canine says, thank you so much. <coughs> You're uh, welcome. Steve wants to know nine month old GSD who paces back and forth from windows when wife and kids are outside. Best way to correct. Steve. Excellent question. couple of things. First of all, I would teach, that's also, the reason why I don't want the dog doing that is because it's going to start getting some separation anxiety issues, but some, some general anxiety issues. It's working itself up. That dog is absolutely working itself up. Its heart rate is increasing. It's probably salivating some more. It's probably getting mentally starting to cycle. I don't want that. I want that dog to learn how to be calm. So how do you stop that? Two ways. You can take your bonker and you can say no throw it at the window, that stops the behavior. Then what you can do is just tell your dog to go lie down. Teach your dog place. So right now I've got two dogs next to me. I'm using a standalone camera. I can't move the camera over there, but if you've seen enough of my stuff, you know my two dogs and they're lying down next to me. So let's get your dog to lie down next, um, uh, lie down on a mat somewhere. That's if you are in the home. If they're outside and the dog's inside, it probably shouldn't be loose inside. It should probably be kenneled up. But don't use the kennel. We're not using our kennels as our punishers, but I wouldn't leave a nine-month-old dog loose in my house if I wasn't there. So if you're home, Steve, tell the dog to go lie down. Number one, you get to work on your obedience. You get to work on your impulse control. And you'll have already also taught that dog no as well. Next. Uh, not the greatest. Hi, Jeff. Michelle from PA, trying hard not to give squishy faces, LOL. Thanks, Michelle. Love you. Is this an inside joke that I, get I don't you. get? Next. Um, Harrison says, long time no see. Hope everything is going great. Harrison, we're freaking rocking and rolling, baby. Next. Oh, hey, Heather Ratcliffe is giving us some funny looking faces. Right. Thanks, Heather. Right. Uh, Michael. Hey, Michael. Dogs break place or down stay inside only. Okay. I have corrected high because he knows the command been doing it for months, has no problem holding the command outside. Okay. So Michael, so the question is, why does your dog blowing off commands inside? So, you know, there's a lot of different things. Number one, what I would do is, first of all, what's high, you know, what's high. It's obviously not high enough to encourage that dog to stay there. Some people say, oh, well, give better rewards. No, the dog already knows the command. Like, and he does it outside. So, for some reason, inside, there's a lot more environmental stimuli. So you got a lot more environmentals going on inside that's creating it, or the dog has just created a habit, or that you haven't practiced duration enough. I would practice long duration. We're talking one, two, three hour place commands. And it doesn't, that might sound like a lot, but if I'm in front of my computer for three hours, 
like I'm putting together my Kelowna British British um my, my excuse me I'm trying to talk about two different things here my Kelowna seminar photos it's going to take me about four hours to put all those photos together I've started doing it by the way if anybody here is from Kelowna is watching that I'm working on it I'm working on it my dogs will be in place for three hours I did about four hours of social media today my dogs were in place first thing in the morning first thing in the morning we have they haven't even gone swimming yet so you know it's it's they can do it you can do it so chances are your 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 punishers are not enough to entice the dog to be there so i would work on more duration and then set the dog up to fail um more frequently as well next uh heather says hi jeff and linda weather outside is warmer and we are spending more time outside i'm getting so many compliments on their behavior thank you just join Patreon and loving the in-depth content. Awesome. Awesome. Heather, make sure you ask a question. Tomorrow is Thursday. I close the questions down from the Monday post and I make a new podcast tomorrow. Thank you so much for being a, a patron of Patreon. If anybody wants to know what it is, you can go to patreon.com. Can you type in? Yeah. Yeah, type in there. So patreon.com and then you can go slash solid canine training. You can go there. It, it uh corrected it auto corrected me to patron okay you solid can, can train yep that's the name of my company yep i know that okay yeah you can do that and then also there's this little i just found out about this a couple weeks ago thanks wicked big lashes and then um did it did it come I, up i'll find out in a little bit all right and then there's a little dollar sign guys at the bottom of this of your screen a little dollar sign Maybe right by where the comments are you can actually hit that dollar sign and you can actually um throw me some, some support on these page, on these YouTube lives, which I thought was really, really cool. And a lot of people are always finding out like, how can we be some more, more some more supportive of Jeff next? All right. Ash. Ashley yes. advised it. a friend to use the bonker is your protocol to immediately pick up the bonker once thrown. She sent me a video of the dog playing with the bonker. Um, so number one, if a dog's playing with the bonker, it might not have been firm enough, but yes, we bonk and then we will go pick it up. But historically though, if you bonk a dog properly, it don't want to pick it up. It shouldn't want to pick it up at all. It don't. That's the last thing it wants to do is pick up that bonker. It doesn't want to go near the bonker. Next. Holly asks, what else can be done to correct counter condition for reactivity to fireworks in addition to exposure to the sounds? So Holly, it's not just exposure to the sounds. This is how we fix all this fireworks. <laughs> Excuse me. And a lot of people are going to struggle with this a lot. I get it. All right. I understand. CBT. Start looking up CBT, guys. The letter C, B, T. Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. Get the book, CBT for Dummies. What you need to do is you need to switch the trigger in the dog from what it does now, which we don't agree with, to something we do agree with. So a common trigger for dogs is thunder, lightning, fireworks, any of these phobias, any of these, any of these things. So as soon as a dog hears a firework, they respond both physically and mentally a certain way. It's a trigger. We need to switch that in them. The mental, we cannot switch right away. You can't tell a dog stop being a nervous wreck. Physically, we can switch it though. So any motion that the dog is doing, such as running around, window to window, all right, hiding under a couch, hiding under a chair, trying to get out of a door, like dogs will jump through windows and die. Dogs will jump through windows and run away. Fourth of July is I think the number one, the number one day of the year where dogs are lost and it is probably parallel with killed as well because of you know being hit by cars so what you're doing is whenever the dog is running around around these environmentals that freak it out you have to correct that that's the part that everybody struggles with i'm punishing a dog for being afraid no you're not you're punishing the act of being physically out of control physically out of control it's really important that we understand that then once that is done, I say, okay, dog, you don't say this, but this is, this is like the process, go lie down over there. And then they go and they lie down over there. Now, if you want to be nervous and fearful, which looks like shaking, okay, fine, sorry. 
nervous and shaking. Now, I'm stopping the physical. Now, when you hear fireworks, thunder, you go to a dog bed and you lay down. If you want to go to your crate, you can go to your crate, but you can't be spinning around in the crate. You can't be barking in the crate. I need you to be laying down and being physically down. Now, what happens next is the dog shakes. That's natural, right? Shakes, it's energy. They've got to, they've got to get the energy out. What we see over time and time and time again is the dog finally whew, relaxes. But it's up to you to give that leadership to the dog. Next. Okay. Uh, is the problem, this is from Michael, is the problem that the place is by the window and front door? Um, yes and no. I wouldn't do, I wouldn't ever have a place by my front door. I wouldn't have a place. If you have a nine-month-old German Shepherd, which is eventually going to turn into a 18-month-old German Shepherd, which I say that because that's usually a, at 18 months is 18 months to maybe 24 months is when we start seeing, you know, maturity in these guys. The last place you want a dog to be is by the front door. The reason being is because I don't want the dog to ever guard that front door. And I own German Shepherds. And I work with power breed dogs. I also work with like happy-go-lucky, you know, non-power breed dogs. I also have two chihuahuas. But the point being is I don't need my German Shepherd to be acting like a guard dog. I don't want that. It's going to bite you in the ass or it's going to bite the wrong person in the ass actually mm -hmm. um, one day. So let's get that. Let's get that. Let's get that away from there. But theoretically though, and there's no reason why you can't have place right next to the front door or right next to the front window, even though I don't want you to do it, you could, and the dog still shouldn't be freaking out. But let's make it easier for the dog right now. Move it away, go to place. Then place goes anywhere. Once you've trained, you want to make it easiest for the dog at the beginning. Easiest for the dog at the beginning. Then you can start adding layers of environment, environmentals, which one of them is the dog is, um, your, your, your wife and kids are outside. Next. Uh, JBL, I agree. Can you tell me how to purchase a pinch collar for Weimariner? Um, yeah, just go online. We have them on our website, <laughs> Solid Canine Training. Just go to shop. But you don't have to buy them from us. Go on to Amazon. Go on to dog.com. Just be careful. There, We recommend Herm Springer. Herm Springer. Your average Weimariner can probably... Eh, I prefer that they wore a 225, 2.25 millimeter. The thing is you might need some extra links on it. Three millimeter is sometimes a little bit overkill for a Weimariner, um, especially some of the larger ones, um, since they don't have any fur or anything. Um, but get the ones from Herm Springer. The problem with buying them from sometimes Amazon is, even though it says Herm Springer, they're knockoffs. And Amazon doesn't know. It's not what they do. You know, they're not experts on prong cowers. The ones we carry on our shop, you don't have to buy them from us, um, uh, um, are, are, are the real ones. And there is a difference on the metal and on the function of them and on the action of the actual, how they're actually designed to work. Next. Uh, D2K says, I finally made it. All right, Woo. nice. Kaifrone, final question. How would I teach my puppy what no means? Oh, every, every dog should know what no means. That's what's great about a bonker. So yes is easy, right? Like when you're using a, when you're using a clicker or a marker or the word yes, so it's yes, and you follow it up with something great, which is what we use is we use the dog's food. And if you want to use treats, use treats, but we use food. So yes is taught with food. So, or yes can be taught with a ball. We don't historically use a ball in training because we can't do enough repetitions of it. And we're not sport dog trainers. So we're family pet trainers. Um, so it's hard to do, if you want to practice place 25 times and you do yes with a food reward, it's a heck of a lot of a quicker process than using yes with a ball reward because then now you've got to reset the dog every single time. Um, so with no, the way to use, the way you want to use, teach the dog no, is there has to be an intolerable consequence, intolerable consequence. So the bonker is great. That's why when you see us bonking a dog, we'll say no and then bonk, one second, two second, and then bonk. And it doesn't look like the dog did anything all that bad. You don't wait to teach the dog no when it's in drive because they don't care. You should do it when they're calm. It's no different than teaching the dog yes when they're in drive. They're not going to pay attention because they're too focused on, on, the, on, on what they're in drive about. Next. Okay. Uh, question from Tom. Yes and break both release and reward commands that you use break. Can you explain, please? Uh, so, so you can interchange them. Break... You could, 
and these are just words. So keep in mind, Tom, they're just words. They don't have to be your words. You can use whatever you want to. Nobody's got to train like we do. Nobody has to do anything we say. So you can, yes means what you did was good. And in there, in there, and there's a reward following usually afterwards. Break means we're done. We're done. And you can reward on break, but you don't have to reward on break. Next. Uh, D2K. Uh, da, da, da. Is five months a good age to start e-collar training? Puppy understands basics, just needs to understand punishers more. Would this help? It does, but I don't want you using any high-level punishers for obedience on a remote collar at five months. So... To me, I want you to start off leash training that dog. And we do that through our lower level pressure on, pressure off theory of dog training. And our videos show that. So that's what we're going to do with five months. So all dogs that are five months on the remote, we're not doing these high punishers for obedience. For obedience. Just keep that in mind. We're not, we, we, you know, if your dog is counter surfing, yeah. Jumping up on people, yeah. Getting in the litter box, yeah. Fence fighting, yeah. Doesn't hold it down for more than a minute. No. So, but you should start teaching the dog on the remote collar because eventually you're going to want that dog to be off leash trained. You can start the remote collar at 16 weeks old because the way we train it, it's barely, barely felt by the dog. And we pair it with food. Next. Oh, this is from the A Angie Ishmael. Hi, Jeff and Linda. Oh, you missed one above it. I did? Kathleen. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry, Kathleen. Hi, Jeff. Kiki Barron and Bronson from Indi I don't know, Indiana. Indiana. I want to thank you for helping me get in touch with Megan Hart. Starting tomorrow, we will begin to work together. Thanks awesome. again. Awesome. Kathleen, so proud of you. And I, um, I'm going to be in Indiana, Elkhart, Indiana, coming up at another seminar. And Megan will probably be there too. Maybe you guys can come together. All right. Okay. So th this one and the angel Ishmael. Hi, Jeff and Linda. Do you have a cat? And if not, why not? So um, we used to have four cats. And the reason why we don't have them anymore is because our dogs killed them all. Don't talk like that. It's a joke, Angie. We own two cats. But if we didn't, there could be thousands, well, thousands, there could be lots of reasons why. Allergies, we don't like cats. You know, there could be a lot of different things. But yes, we have two cats. Okay. You I think that. No, I guess they're not in that many videos. Not really. If you check out our Instagram stories, sometimes in Instagram stories they're in there. Next. They're quite elusive, though those cats. Mm. Um. That was a joke about my dogs killing them. By the yeah, way, yeah. There's don't, no don't, killing going. Please on don't here. take it seriously. Next. Uh, smiley face P. I don't know what that. <laughs> that's a funny <laughs> name. <laughs> uh, I have two questions. One: What do you do with the long strap on the e collar? Do you order the buckle collar for the transmitter? The long strap on the e collar, do you mean if it's too long? Just cut it off. Just cut it off. But if you want to switch out collars, you can do that. You can do the bungee strap if you want to. Next. Um, Harrison says, I think a big part of it is also how the human behavior is to the sound as well. If you jump, the dog will jump too. Harrison, you know, possibly, but you can proof your dog on that stuff. Put your dog in duration and start jumping, right? So put your dog in duration. So once your dog learns place and down, you start introducing all these environmentals to the dog, right? Start introducing environmentals. You know, just remember that a lot of dogs are raised around gunshots. So all your field trial, your hunt trial dogs, all your hunting dogs, all your police canine dogs, they're all proofed around gunfire. So just because the gunfire goes off, we want these dogs to be pretty much immune to them. So you can do the same thing with your dog. You can do the same thing with your dog. If you're just tuning in, my name is Jeff Gelman of Solid Canine Training. I am a dog trainer. I own a dog training business in Providence, Rhode Island. We specialize in aggression rehab and behavior modification, but we also deal with all the basic obedience commands, advanced obedience commands. We deal with eight-week-old puppies all the way up to whatever. We work with human aggressive dogs and dog aggressive dogs, severe separation anxiety. Most of my shows, most of my Q&As are very punishment-based because people want to know how to stop an unwanted behavior. The only way to stop an unwanted behavior is through punishment. Punishment is not abuse. You need to actually learn how to properly punish. The first thing you want to know about punishment is you're not mad, you're not angry, you're not upset at your dog at all. And it's not personal. 
you just don't agree with the behavior that they're doing and it needs to stop. If there's a lot of people out there that says you never have to punish a dog or say no, they're lying to you. And that's a whole other show. A lot of dog trainers who, and this is nobody in particular, by the way. Another thing, if you've been following me long enough, you'll know that I've never named dog trainers and I never will name a dog trainer. But a lot of dog trainers say never say no. Meanwhile, with their own dogs, they're shocking the dogs at home. Fact. All right. So I personally travel the world doing dog training seminars. You can go to rvdogtrainer.com, rvdogtrainer.com. Linda's going to type it in when I answer the next question. Okay. Um, D2K. Second question. One of my friends has a dog that suffers from separation anxiety. She's trying to get her dog to pass her CGC test. How should we fix this? Well, for the CGC test, the, the only, the only, first of all, nothing against CGC tests, but they're, they're, they're a crock of shit. So nothing against them. Let your friend do it. Every dog should at least have that. But that's like, that's not the final frontier, in my opinion. We have a lot of dogs that come in that bite dogs and bite humans and that run away with no recall, and they've passed their CGCs. But again, I'm glad that your friend is involved with the, the training of her dog. I'm not trying to knock it, but I just want to get it clear out there that a CGC test is a pretty worthless thing. But the, how you're going to do it is you're going to role play it. But if she has separation anxiety, I've got a video on separation anxiety. But how she can practice it is this. Practice doing sits and downs and places and place command and start leaving the room. And start leaving the room. That's how you do it. And then you start doing it with other people in the room. That's how you're doing it. You can proof it with a remote collar. If there's any whining, the remote collar can fix all that stuff. So start practicing all your duration stuff with her in the room and then her leaving the room and then coming back. If there's any audible, the remote collar can do it. But what you need to do is you can't just blast a dog on a remote collar for whining because they're going to get up and run away. It does, they, doesn't, they don't understand what that means. So there is a proper way to actually stop whining with a remote collar to keep the dog also holding command. That's really, really important um, to note. All right, next. Okay. This question is from Sandra. Hi, Jeff. I have an e-collar on my pit. What's better, prong collar or e-collar when trying to correct him with human reactivity? I feel like I'm pumping him up when I correct him with the e-collar. So you, you absolutely can escalate the arousal in your dog with bad timing. You can escalate the arousal in your dog with bad timing. So what you possibly do, the best thing to do is a bonker. Bottom line, the best way to eliminate arousal in a dog that's dog reactive is a bonker. The problem is most people are going to be very uncomfortable walking down the street with a bonker and the dog starts getting, getting aroused. You would say, no, you'd bonk the dog. The whole neighborhood will freak out. Animal control gets called. People think you're beating and hurting your dog. That's why we like classes where you can role play all this stuff. What I would do is you can role play that stuff in the privacy of your own home. Um, and then what you're going to, but, or what you can do is to me, the remote collar is going to be a better option. If you're pumping your dog up, you're probably underwhelming your dog and your timing is late. All right. So you're underwhelming your dog and you're sorry. One of my dogs is having a dream girl um, <laughs> is, is uh, uh, your timing is probably a little bit off on that. Next. Um, Holly asks, oh, she says, got it. Correct. The physical triggered response then. Yep. CBT. Yep. Lead, it says lead to calmer state of mind. Thank you for practical instructions and yes. the little sign. And just keep in mind, just keep in mind, guys, this is not an ego thing. I've worked with over 4,000 dogs, literally at the training center. We've had 15 times, 100, God, over 2,000 dogs in my seminars. Everything I give advice on, we've done. This is not stuff that's been read this is not stuff that I'm repeating from someone else. This is stuff that we've literally done hands-on and seen the results. And we've had long-term results from these things. So we've had long-term results. So none of this stuff is hearsay. If I don't know something like excitement pee, I'm not a good guy to talk to about excitement pee because we haven't worked with enough excited, excitement peers. You know, housebreaking, that's not my specialty. It's not my specialty. Stopping unwanted behaviors, that's my specialty. So we've done it over and over and over again, either hands-on, live, at a seminar, massive amounts of Skype calls, and people watching our videos and giving us feedback. So that, so when you hear these things, I just want people to know if you're brand new to my world, where it comes from. 
It comes from actually us doing the work. It's important to know that in a dog trainer, that they're not just hearing things because a lot of stuff is repeated and it's repeated wrong. Next. Uh, human is the next person. Uh, water stream squirted can be last resort to know if voice commands fail. Best training is reward based. So human, I don't agree with you on that. Okay. So the best training is not reward based. The best way to train a, I'll just make this one statement, but I'm not going to get into an argument on my own show, have your own show, but you haven't worked with enough dogs yet and you have not fixed enough behavior problems. And I'm not attacking you, but it's fact and it's misleading and it's leaving people um, hanging. The best way to train a wanted behavior is reward-based. You cannot, it cannot be stopped with a reward though, and I want to behavior. As far as using a water stream, I have a dog that will bite your face off if you try to stream it with water. So that's not a good punisher at all. So next, start your own channel, make tons of videos to help. So just make so many videos to help. So many people out there are struggling. They're struggling, but don't come on my show and tell me the reward-based training is better when it's not because you're lying to the general public. All right. And I'm not mad at you or anything. Next. Ashley asks, can a great Pyrenees be trained on the e-collar to not bark at car or people, but still do their job to bark at predators? That's their job. Any way to communicate acceptable and not love y'all? Well, <coughs> it's not your great Pyrenees' job to bark at people and cars. It's not. Because you, you have to be really, really careful. Hold on one second. Let me just... Um, she says to not bark at cars, but to still bark at predators. Oh, well, that's different. So a predator, so a car, so a car or a person is different than a predator. So I don't train, I don't train perimeter protection, which is what you're asking for. I don't train perimeter protection. So again, that's not my level of expertise. I stop things. I stop things. So what I would do is I would talk to a somebody that actually trains for working dogs. So any livestock herding dog, sheep herding dog, um, um, any sort of perimeter protection dog. That's what I would do. I would look for a source for that. And there's a lot of people in the farm world that are going to know how to do that. But you absolutely can separate the two out where the dog does not bark at a car, but would bark at, say, a coyote or a wolf or a bear. Next. Uh, Michael says, thanks. I'll move place away from the front door. He is a 16-month Rottweiler GSD. Okay. Oh, I thought you said nine months. Yeah, you want to let's eliminate that right now, Michael. Good for you. Uh, next question from uh, Jute 1974. Bought a prong collar yesterday. Had a very pleasant walk. That was easy. Thank you, Jeff. So Jute 1974. So I'm not going to assume anything, but I've gotten literally, I don't know, 25,000 emails that say that. And, and that's not that many over the course of my career. Up until yesterday, your walks probably sucked. Up until yesterday, your walks probably sucked. You went out and got a 25 to 35 dollar training tool. You put it on the dog, most likely properly. And even if you didn't, it sort of still works. And you took a walk today. And you had a nice walk. That's all I care about. And that's all any of us should care about. This concept that a prong collar is this horrific device is just an outright blatant lie. It's misleading. It's lying. For a dog trainer to say that it's a bad device, it borders on being unethical. They work and they work great. And for someone to say, well, you're just lazy. Um, who said that? Jute, I assure you, Jute 1974 is probably not a lazy person. Jute 1974 was probably busting his or her ass to get their dog trained. and was probably frustrated the lack of any progress whatsoever. And then in one day, probably made more progress than in X amount of months. And the only reason why I say this is because this is what people are struggling with. This is what people are struggling with. That's also why I responded to this human person with this line of bullshit that positive training is the best. 
because it's a bunch of bullshit. And we practice positive training 90% of the time, but it's not the best. Balanced training is the best. Punishment is what stops unwanted behaviors, and punishment is what proofs unwanted behaviors, and punishment is what gets your dog to be reliable. Reliable. But you, I've, I've been talking about this since I had my radio show 14 years ago, 12 years ago, and I'm going to be ramping it up even more because so many people are struggling because they're being lied to. Because everybody's afraid to say that word because they're afraid of being attacked. But I am so passionate about this. Feel free to attack because all I care about are dogs being better behaved with families and dog owners to have to stop the killing because the killing needs to stop. The lies need to stop. It's horrific what's going on out there in our industry. Next. Uh, smiley face. Can you work on sit down and place with the e-collar while teaching come for off leash? Training? Yeah, do them all. No problem at all. Pick one a day. Do one plus recall and then another one plus recall. Absolutely. Go crazy. Next. Uh, horse crazy 92. Jeff, my dog loves to destroy the toilet paper and we have moved it up off the holder, put it on the counter, but we have to keep it at the front for my niece. And she tried to get it the okay. other day. What should I do? Horse, you're brand new to my world. Welcome. I love you. I care about you. There's no effing way I'm moving my toilet paper that I use to wipe my pristine butt because my dog doesn't know how to leave it alone. Ain't gonna happen. My toilet paper stays on that roll. By the way, it comes from underneath. No. Okay. No, it does not. My, not in this house. My wet wipes are neatly stacked with the top closed so they don't dry out. Your dog does not go in your bathroom. So it's your bathroom. That dog shits outside. It does not need toilet paper. It doesn't. If it wants to wipe its butt, it can drag its ass across the ground. Remote collar on your dog. Camera set up. Or just wait until your dog goes in that bathroom. That dog goes into that bathroom. Correct on the remote collar. How high? High enough for your dog to take a beeline out of that freaking bathroom like the world's coming to an end. If you're brand new to my world, and if you found that was mean, I apologize. Not really, but I'm, I have empathy for your feelings. But your dog could die by ingesting stuff. And there, you shouldn't have to remove, put stuff out of the way. Bathrooms are very dangerous places for dogs to be in. Actually, humans. I think the number one accidents in the house happens yes, in the bathroom. Most definitely. Yeah. So let's do that. All right. So how do you stop your dog from getting the toilet paper roll? Through punishment. You're not mad. You're not angry. It's stay out of the bathroom. Okay. Let's keep them buns clean. Next. All right. Um, Tom, many thanks, Jeff, from Australia. Oh, you're welcome, mate. I love um, Australia. <coughs> Mo. Hi, Jeff. What's a good no bark collar that would punish whining in addition to barking? Ah, Mo. There's not a good one out there. Go with the. Uh, see, I, I'm not sure. I think Dogtra is making a ultra sensitive collar now. Look for that one. Look for the ultra sensitive collar by Dogtra. Next. Okay. Zachary. Hey, Zachary, buddy. Just found you guys. Love your videos. My new puppy is a Roddy. Our big problem is when she is in the yard, she cries and howls when we leave her sight or are just out of her reach. Thank you. Um, I don't know how old your puppy is. I need more information about your puppy. Because if your puppy's too young, it shouldn't be you shouldn't be out of its sight right now. As far as like, it's, I mean, I mean by outside, by outside. So I wouldn't I wouldn't want my dog to be unsupervised because it can get into things. So I need to know when a lot of people say puppy, they, they might mean eight or nine months, or you might mean eight to 14 weeks. So give me a little bit of information on that. Next. Um, this is from Debbie. 
Ruby did great at festival, did react to a yappy dog. What do I do to keep her from reacting? So Debbie, you have to proof that. You gotta get your dog around more yappy dogs. So what I would do is don't go inside of a dog park. I don't like dog parks. People should see out of dog parks, but you go on the outside of dog parks. You go on the outside of dog parks. So this is the thing. But Debbie, I know you've had your struggles with your dog. If that, if you were at a festival and some yappy dog was like three to five feet away at your dog, that takes a lot of role playing to do. That, most dogs aren't going to do that. Are there dogs that can walk right past yappy dogs? Absolutely. But your dog has struggled with reactivity before. So the timing on that, you'd have to get that dog to, as soon as it got aroused, you'd have to, and I know you use a remote collar, the dog gets aroused, you have to correct that. And you also want to use space. If I saw a little yappy dog yap it away and I was with my dogs, I would move away a little bit. I don't need to prove that I can walk by them because I don't trust that little yappy dog from lunging. And, I don't, and owners of little dogs, I own chihuahuas, but historically owners of little dogs think their little dog can just come running up to you and they think it's cute. And they historically, other than Heather, who's one of our fans and a soon to be T3 student um, and a friend of Linda's and a friend of mine, other than her, most little dogs are not well behaved. Next. True that. Um, Mark, Jeff, is it detrimental to leash correct at the wrong time? Can my GSD associate people or dogs in a negative way if I correct at the wrong time? As always, thanks for your guidance and videos. So, Mark, <coughs> I hear that a lot. This sort of like imagined harm or this negative association. Timing is important. Timing is important. But this is the way that I like to look at things. Even before you introduced corrections to your dog, even before, your dog already had a negative association with people or else you wouldn't have to punish your dog, right? So why would you correct your dog around people unless it was doing something you didn't agree with? Are you following me? So your dog is already has already a negative association is already. It's already there or else you wouldn't have to correct it and then you wouldn't have the question. Does that make sense, Mark? And everybody else, does that make sense? So the issue already exists. It's sort of like, don't, okay, a dog's in a crate biting at the crate. You, people say you shouldn't punish it because then it'll have a negative association with the crate. It already does before I showed up, before the punisher showed up. So what I would say is you need to create a negative association with being reactive is what you need to do. That's what you have to do. And that's where the timing does come in. So play with it a little bit. Next. Mm -hmm. uh, Jody says, the cats, you're a classic. And then funny faces. Thank you, Jody. Um, Harrison, yeah, I understand. Janice. <coughs> hey, Jeff, love your videos. I'm actually going back into canine training and handler after retiring in 2009. Nice, Janice. Proud of you. Sweet. Next. Sandy. Jeff, sometimes we put our GSD in the backyard with toys and bones in her five by 10 pen. How do we keep her from trying to dig out? It's just for fresh air mostly. So Sandy, the, what I, for, how do you, so the question is, how do you stop digging? But I would also say, do more stuff with your dog. But if you, you could also do have a concrete pad, but that doesn't fix the problem. How do you stop digging? With a remote cow or a shock cow. They're called the shock cowers. So that's what you do. Dog digs, boom, correct. You make it suck to dig. I don't care how many toys. This is what you know. Have more toys. Take the dog for a walk first. Use have, Instead of a toy, have one of those mental stimulating games. Fill up a toy with food, stick it in the freezer, bring it out there so it stays busy. I'm not, I don't disagree with any of those actions. None of them are going to stop digging though. The most, like that won't stop digging. How do you stop digging? You make digging suck. It's, it's, it's simple. And nobody wants to talk about this. So nobody wants to talk about punishers. So how do you stop digging? You make it suck because you can have 20 toys out there. Take your dog on a five mile walk. Run your dog on a treadmill. Guess what? It's probably still going to dig. You know? So what do you do? Make digging suck. And then you can still do the, all the other stuff if you want to. Next. Okay. 
DK says, thank you guys. And her goal is therapy work. That's why she needs the CGC. Right. I get it. So thank you for explaining that. And I, I'm glad you, I mean, I'm not knocking CGC. So if her goal is therapy work, it takes a special dog to be a therapy dog. Um, definitely want to get over that right now. So I would get, then the dog should be super comfortable with other dogs because if the dog is going to be a therapy dog, it's going to be handled by a lot of people. It's going to be handled by a lot of people. Remember, every dog can't be a therapy dog. So even my, my dogs probably wouldn't make good therapy dogs because they're a little bit drivey and they actually don't want to be away from me. And that's the way I, that's the way I've raised my dogs. I've raised my dogs that I'm everything. So what you want to do is get the dog exposed to a lot of people, especially children. Next. Uh, Michelle. Oh, hey, Michelle. Hey, Michelle. Hi, Jeff and Linda. Glad I found you on YouTube. I've been looking for a bark collar to recommend to clients. I've tried a few and haven't really found one I'm overly impressed with. Any ideas? So you can do the Garmin bark limiter. You can do the one from eCollar Technologies and the one from Dogtra. There's your three right there. If, and, and there's no great one out there. Next. This is from Gloria. I have a two-year-old border collie with separation anxiety. I stop him from stalking me. He is crate trained. Um... Oh, shoot, I lost it. Um, gets less praise and is not allowed on the furniture. I have been using the e-collar. Fishing level for whining, which will sometimes work, but not stop issues, say, the next day or in a different location. The issue is generally worse when I get him to stay in one spot. Mm -hmm. And this is getting long. Yep. Also, when we're out in public, what else can you suggest okay. to lower and eventually remove the anxiety? Okay, so first of all, the way to, the best way to get rid of anxiety is, first of all, duration. <laughs> so I want you to work on duration. I want you to start doing the place command. The place command, I got videos on it. The place command means go to um, go, go to uh, the, uh, a dog bed, go to a dog bed and don't get off. Go to a dog bed and don't get off. That's what I want you to do. As far as anxiety is concerned, yes, using a punisher is great for anxiety. You can also use a bonker for whining. A bonker is a, wrap, is, is, is a wrapped up towel. You would say no, and then you would, boom, toss it at the dog. All right? So that's how you're going to do that. Next. It's been an hour. Okay, go a little bit longer. Guys, we're going to have to stop answer, a, answering questions anytime right now. Next. Okay. Um, Susan. Oh, just figured this out. Thank you for all your information. You're welcome. Glenn, hello from Singapore. Very clear and well-articulated talk show. Singapore, I love you. I'm trying to get out to your country. I'm trying to get out to your country. There's a trainer out there, Ben. He's in Singapore, and I'm trying to get out canine training Singapore, maybe it's called. Um, and we're trying to put a seminar together. We just don't know if there's a big enough audience out there. So thank you for the support in Singapore. Stay in contact with me. Next. Jake, my dog struggles with healing past other reactive and lunging dogs, but when in a sit has no problem sitting quietly. Have you seen this before? Best way to fix? I have seen it before. So if that's your go-to thing, I would. But the last thing I want my dog to do is to be sitting when there's a reactive dog. But I get why you're doing it. And I'm glad that that part is working. What I would like to do is, I don't know what kind of equipment you're walking your dog on. So if you're not walking your dog on a prong collar, it's going to make it a lot easier to get past those, those, those that, that explosion. All right. So let's get past that explosion with your, you know, with, with your dog. So let's, let's do that. If you're not using a remote collar, remote collars help a lot with reactivity of your dog as well. Next. Uh, Michelle is with me on the toilet paper. All right. Great. Thank Michelle. You. Nice. <coughs> Horse crazy. Jeff, thank you. LOL. I have learned the place command from you and have taught him that I will have to save up for the e-collar. Cool. Awesome. Rob. How yes. do you de how do I deal with a deaf crazy on the leash dog? So the same way you teach any dog that's got hearing. So no, and I work with many deaf dogs. No free passes at all. So first of all, for is a general rule. What are you walking your dog on? So all the training equipment that we're we're, we're we're huge fans of tools. The reason why we're huge fans of tools is because it makes things easier for owners. And yeah. It should be easy. That doesn't mean lazy. It means easier. So dog owners are not experts at dog training and you don't need to be. So your, your, your dog, whether it's deaf or hearing, let's put it on a proper prong collar that fits. You never have to go above three millimeters. I don't know how, what size your dog is um, and get a prong collar that fits. I've got a video on how to size a prong collar, how to put a prong collar on and how to start walking your dog, you know, on a prong collar. Then what you're going to do is start teaching your dog how to heal properly with no environmental distractions. Then you start adding distractions in. Remember, it's not just holding on though. You actually have to actively train your dog. And I got videos on that. Jamal. Hey, Jamal. Hey, Jamal. Um, 
Hey, Jeff and Linda, finally got the notification for the live. For those who choose to use non Hermspringer collars, prong collars, especially with rubber on the tips, do you tell them stop BSN or, or they get the same result? What, Jamal? I don't know what that What's is. BSN? Jamal, your question is too hard. Ask the question. Ask the question on my Patreon page because that's the last question anyway. I don't understand that. So, guys, we didn't get the ones we didn't get to. I really, really apologize. This is a one-hour show. I do the best that I can in one hour. That's Linda's um, threshold is an hour, and we already went over. It's late. You can go to my Patreon page, Patreon.com/slash Solid Canine Training. Type that in, Linda. Okay. Patreon.com/slash Solid Canine Training. Thank you so much. Um, I'll be back next week. This will go up if you missed any of it. And if you're just tuning in, thank you. My name is Jeff Gelman of Solid Canine Training. I'm a real dog trainer. We've got a real dog training facility. We specialize in aggression, rehab, and behavior modification. I'm honored and blessed and humbled that um, all of you showed up here tonight. And if you're brand new to my world and you want to know how we train dogs, it's not this loud, exuberant thing. This is my this is my social media talk show because that's what this is it's voice your persona. <laughs> my persona when we actually work with dogs we're actually extremely quiet and calm and we showcase a lot of our training work through live video streams periscope facebook live and instagram live actually on our facebook page and you can see my crew doing it also for any dog trainers out there we are hiring we are looking for a full-time dog trainer to add to our team in Providence, Rhode Island. You can bring your dog with you. And I do have some housing available um, uh, on site. So even if you didn't have a vehicle, it would work. I'm looking for a dog trainer that has a minimum of basic experience. I, we're not looking to train someone from the ground up. We're looking for someone that at least can take a dog from untrained to trained you don't have to have aggression rehab experience though. All right, the more tools you know, but believe it or not, a good foundation of positive reinforcements, because that's what we do most of the day, is extremely important. Jeff Gellman, Sally Canine Training. I am madly in love with all of you. Thank you so much for being here. I love you. Take care. Good night.